I'm Jill Griffin, and this is the Career Refresh Podcast. I'm a former media and marketing executive turned career strategist and strengths coach. I spent my career working my way up and through the ranks of global organizations and startups. And today, I show others how to do the same. Join me each week as we discuss the strategies to leverage your strengths, increase your confidence and visibility, and reset your career with actionable steps towards a finer future. Ready? Let's do it. Hey friends, welcome back. Okay, this week I want to talk about your boss. I want to talk about how to manage up, why managing up is so important, and how to create career success because you learn how to manage up well. We need our bosses so that we're in the know. We need them to give us the resources we need to perform and secure um, opportunities. Uh, If we want promotions and, and training and development, we need our bosses on our side. And sometimes these relationships can be really easy. And sometimes they are incredibly uneasy. And we're going to unpack that today. All right, let's look at a scenario. You've been working at a company for a while and you're doing well. You then get promoted and you're now managing people or more people on a, on a higher organizational level. What I see happen so often is two things. Either one, you got promoted and suddenly it feels like you work for a completely different company because your own thoughts are coming to the table and you're working with new people. So the, the two of those scenarios is making it feel like it's your first day on the job. Or the other thing that happens, which is that nothing has changed except your title and hopefully your bank account. And you're like, wait, I got promoted, but what's going on here? And this is the conversation we're having, right? This is about how you're managing up and your boss that you are stepping into the stage that you want to step into. So let's look at that. Like you were previously perhaps an individual contributor. And as an IC, that position may not have prepared you for management or the managing of others. You got promoted because you were a high performer and you may not have had to think about how to motivate a team. Or you're now not clear in the delineation between your role as a manager and what you should be doing and then your previous role as an independent contributor, which you did so well. And I've seen this challenge grow with remote working because suddenly you're a new manager or you're managing new people And you don't see anyone beyond the Zoom meeting or the Microsoft Teams, right? You're not, you're not around them anymore. And the former like hall monitor approach that so many corporations have done is quickly coming to a head as more and more remote work looks like it's going to stay that way. I recently saw a 60 Minutes episode in which a senior leader at LinkedIn said that Before the pandemic, one in 67 jobs was remote. Now it's one in seven. So if we're looking at these numbers, this isn't changing. So we have to look at the way we're managing people and especially our boss. And so often the concept of managing becomes a title and not a discipline. The unfortunate reality in many workplaces is that management is about taking the credit or placing blame rather than managing and motivating people. So this is just your public service announcement to not be that person. And it's important to remember that while it's going to be nuanced in your organization, your role as a manager or leader is to create capacity for others. It's not to do the same work as them. It's not to do work that, or behaviors that micromanage them. It That's only going to create resentment and tension because no one wants a helicopter parent. What they want is someone who is going to help shape and ship them and help them with the changes in the organization and the marketplace. They want someone to support and stretch them and guide them so that they can move professional mountains, right? They need to move what's in front of them. So when you're thinking about This new role for you, your part of managing your boss is going to be managing your team and making sure your boss knows you got this. You want the same things from your boss, right? When it comes down to your new boss, my question to you is how do you view them? Are you viewing them as a coach, as an evaluator, or as a judge? 
And this can feel really confusing and may even feel a little threatening, right? Your boss can be a tremendous help and inspiration. But in order to get that help, in order for you to grow in your role, you may have to reveal some of your shortcomings. And if you're thinking, okay, if I do, they're going to interpret my weaknesses as faults, and then they may try to like micromanage me or performance plan me, and they're going to want me to improve my weaknesses. And if you've been listening for a while, you know how I feel about all of this, right? A weakness never becomes a strength. And then I find that when we lead with strength-based concepts, like saying to our boss and to leadership, you know what, this is when you get the best out of me. And then you let them know how you work best so you can deliver the highest quality value and results. And similarly, let them know when you're not at your best so that you're not defining a weakness per se, but instead you're letting the boss know how you work and what you're willing to do to improve upon that. And honestly, I find the easiest way to solve for this weakness question is to just do a Gallup Clifton Strengths 34 assessment. Um, You can buy it directly on their site or work with a coach like myself. It's about 50 bucks. The reason why I am a certified strength coach is that I take my clients through this assessment and because it gives you language beyond your strengths and helps you explain your blind spots. You can choose what you want to convey and how you want to convey it. Just again, know that strengths and weaknesses are not opposites. One does not become the other. Working on a weakness doesn't make it a strength. You might have some improvement. You might get 1% better. But by definition, it's never going to become a strength. The other thing that I suggest is figuring out your boss's strength. And if you are a strength-based culture, then knowing what their Gallup strengths are is going to help. So then you have a commonality of language and you know where they are in their flow and when they're in their excellence and they'll know yours. But if you're not a strength-based culture, it's okay. You just need to ask them to, and strategically watch them, see when they're in the flow. When does their excellence show up? When does their face light up? When do they seem most content at work? I'm going to guess they're in their strengths. When we are viewing our new boss through the lens of, are they a friend or foe? This may lead you to find yourself striving to feel capable and in control. But in reality, you're really viewing your boss as a threat. So you might even now be more confused because just a few months ago, you were promoted and you felt like you were a real asset within the organization, feeling like you were on top of the world. And now you're in a completely different situation and you don't see what happened. And I'm going to tell you what happened is your thoughts. Your thoughts are creating something that you believe. You are not separating fact from fiction. And then you are acting from your thoughts, which is creating this feeling of either threat or confused or stressed. And then you're acting from that stress and that's what you're creating more of because your thoughts are going to impact the results you create. So when you're operating under a long haul mindset that bosses are authority or threat, and then you can pretty much assure yourself it's going to be hard to deliver long term. Yes, being in the fight can generate some badass thinking and strategy and clever ways of showing up, but that fight energy is not sustainable without a cost to your relationships, your creativity, your deliverables, and your health. So what do you do? Well, first, don't judge and categorize your bosses and thinking that they are either all judge or all evaluator. This is a variation on all or nothing thinking, and we know that people are messy and nuanced. None of us is always anything. Next, I want you to reflect on your history. Do you ever hear the expression, if it's hysterical, it's historical? Yeah. So get clear on your thoughts around authority. Are you dragging your own baggage into this situation? Have you felt this sort of icky way about a boss before? Do you constantly bend yourself into a pretzel to get approval for your boss and that you seek validation for them in order to feel good about yourself? Do you find yourself in unquestioning compliance or are you always resisting? Reflect on your history here and make notes of the feelings that you've created and the thoughts you have about previous bosses. And don't presume that your boss is always going to be the same. You're not always the same. Think of them as having dual roles that are going to shift and morph depending on the situation. I suggest that you want to strive for mutual dependence. They need you for their success. 
and you need them for your success and opportunity and money and whatever else you're going for. On a broad scale, your boss wants you to collaborate, lead initiatives, and develop your team and your reports. They want you to stay current. They want you to be a cross athlete. They want you to drive your own growth. And if you want to see how they will operate, you could test their willingness to provide support on something less risky. Then you get to see if the coach or the evaluator shows up. You get to see how they act in situations. Find out what's important to them. Is it strategy, strategic planning, decisiveness, collaboration, building consensus, developing and displaying these skills in a collaborative way with others? You may also want to showcase that you have a unique skill that the department needs to be successful. Just make sure you position yourself as an ally and not a threat. I've seen many people weaponize and withhold their excellence until the bosses and leadership are almost genuflecting. And sure, that may work in the short term, but now you're just the dick of the department. So if you do that, good luck with your future relationships. For the most part, your ability to perform is going to be a key factor in creating a solid relationship with your boss. Yeah, your results are important, but also are you being supportive of them, your peers, your direct reports? Are you keeping your boss and other key stakeholders informed? This goes for people at all levels. Be generous and assume that everyone has the best intentions because you may need that grace one day and the faster you extend it to others, the faster you'll build mutually generative relationships. Okay, the boss is boss. Depending on your organization, this is the person who ultimately approves your raise, your professional development, your changes in your roles and responsibilities. And they're going to have a broad perspective on the organization and what's in the pipeline. So how do you get to know them? Here's a couple of different ways that you can have to apply based on your specific situation. One, stay in the know. If you are meeting with her, make sure you know what's going on within the organization, the industry, and you're up on the latest trade news. This may be provide very fertile ground for a chat, a very casual conversation. I know we're not all in elevators these days, but that's often when you bump into senior leadership, right? You're finding them in the hallway, you're finding them in, in elevators. And again, if we're not in the office and we're in a remote situation, then there are times before and after the team's meeting that you may be able to chat with leadership. Or if you think about it, if, if the boss, if he's had a public achievement, send them up email and congratulate him. I mean, I know it sounds so basic and simple, but we're all human and it's nice to be recognized. Another idea is you can reach out to her, but if you do, make sure you mention your current boss's name so that she doesn't think you're jumping the box. Tell your boss you're going to email her, but you're not asking for permission. You're just providing air cover to your boss. What you say, you could ask about industry organizations you're considering joining. And if she's part of any of them, you can think about professional development courses. Um, and again, that you're considering taking. And again, it's all about reaching out, providing some insight, asking maybe some questions. You might even invite her to an industry event or talk online that you're attending. Okay, friends, you've got this. You can step into this role by managing your mind, getting clear on your own strengths, and being a really good partner to your boss. Okay, friends, before I go, I want to talk to you about a new group coaching program I am launching. It's a bit of a career wake-up call. It's the one that you've been waiting for. It's where you go from wondering, is this all there is? To knowing and owning your genius and designing your own career trajectory. You're gonna develop confidence you need to secure a future job that reflects not just your talents, but who you are. So let me ask you, have you ever experienced anything of the following? Do you find yourself like job hopping or constantly looking on LinkedIn or other services for a new job and like hoping the next one will be the job that you'll finally be seen, valued, and promoted for your talents? Are you struggling to understand why you are secretly miserable in your job that on paper looks great and checks all the boxes? Are you feeling ungrateful because none of the opportunities you've been given seems to fill this like huge career shaped hole and you are always left wondering, is this it? Are you frustrated because you can't figure out how to show up with executive presence, form higher level relationships you need and speak eloquently and be heard? Then my friend, you have what I call the corporate identity crisis. 
But here's the good news. On the other side of every good crisis is clarity, direction, and the possibility for a totally different life, and in this case, career. I've helped hundreds of clients amplify their strengths, increase their visibility, create their career narrative, and design a bigger and brighter future using my proven tools and framework. The program starts soon, so be the first to get in the know. I'm going to put the details in the show notes so you can get on the list to get all the details once they come out. All right, my friends, have a beautiful week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Career Refresh Podcast. If you're enjoying this podcast and you want more career and mindset tips, get on my email list by going to jillgriffincoaching.com. I'll also put that link in the show notes. But before you go, please rate and review this podcast as it helps me get the word out to people everywhere so they can also thrive in the workplace. I'll see you next time.